Hello and welcome to Christ the Rock's Rock Reflections. My name is Jason Rogers and today we're going to be exploring another aspect of Advent. So Isaiah chapter 9 verses 6 to 7 says, For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. These words in Isaiah are probably amongst one of the best known and best loved words from the scripture. And some say arguably one of the greatest pieces of choral music ever composed in Handel's Messiah. What is the importance of names? Names in the Bible were extremely important. In the Bible, a name not only conveys who you are, but it says something about your character. So for example, God gave Jacob a new name in the Old Testament called Israel, which means one who fought with God. Because according to Genesis 32, Jacob struggled with God and with men and prevailed. In Isaiah's prophecy we see today, he gives the coming king four important names, which I briefly want to look at this today. They are Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father and Prince of Peace. Wonderful Counselor was the first name given to our, one, our wonderful coming king. What does wonderful mean? So often we use the word wonderful in different ways than the word that Isaiah used to have. You see, when we tend to use the word wonderful, we mean something is good or excellent. In fact, we might say, oh, I had a wonderful time last night with my friends. But Isaiah describes the coming king as wonderful. He means much more than good or excellent. You see, the Hebrew word for wonderful is pella, or it could be pila, I hope I pronounced that right, which in, in other words, it means that God is a doer of miracles and marvellous and wonderful things, which are beyond any human ability and understanding. So when Isaiah is calling this coming king wonderful, he is making it very clear that he is going to be powerful, mighty, glorious and a doer of great miracles. We move on to our second one, mighty God. Isaiah also says that the coming king will be called mighty God. You see, Jesus is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. There is no one greater than Jesus Christ. In the opening verses of John's Gospel, we're reminded that Jesus was involved in the creation of the universe. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and that life was light of men. Isn't it extraordinary to think that as Christians we have that direct access to the mighty king, the creator, the sustainer of our universe. The third one is everlasting father. The next title that Isaiah gives to our coming king is everlasting father. You see, God our father has revealed his love to us through Jesus Christ, our saviour, our heavenly father. God offers us compassion, loving care, protection, guidance, support and encouragement. As, and as our everlasting father, he inhabits eternity. He not only caught up in the restriction, sorry, he is not caught up or restricted by the period of time as we are. Therefore, he does not change. He doesn't get older or slower or frailer. Nor does he need to mature or grow or learn. He is that way forever. You see, that he, in Hebrews, the writer describes Jesus as this. He is the same yesterday, today 
and forever. Prince Charles has many titles. He's heir to the throne. He, he's his Royal Highness, the Princess of Wales. He's the Duke of Cornwall. He's the Knight of Garner, Garter. He's the Duke of Rothensay, the Knight of the Thistle, the Rear Admiral, the Great Master of the Order of Bath, the Earl of Chester. I can go on and on and on. But also, he is the father to William and Harry. He is dad. And we have that special privilege. We have that an immense privilege of being able to call the King of Kings, our Father, Abba, Father. And finally, he is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah declares the coming King as the Prince of Peace. You see, Jesus is the Prince of Peace because of, through his sacrifice on the cross, we are made right with God and can experience that, pit, print, sorry, that peace with God. Ultimately, it's only through Jesus that we can experience this peace that passes all understanding. And as many of you know, the Hebrew word for peace is shalom. Now, shalom, it means more than just peace. It means complete wholeness, complete health, complete peace, complete harmony. It means to bind together all the fragments of life into a meaningful wholeness. Peace is not about the absence of trouble in our lives, but the reassurance that no matter what we face in life, Jesus is with us and nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. Sadly today, people in our world, peace seems to be such an exclusive thing. They chase after it, expecting to find it in relationships, marriage, children, hobbies, careers, possessions. But true peace is only found through Jesus Christ, because in him we deserve and we, sorry, in him we discover our true selves. In Jesus, we discover love, acceptance, forgiveness. That is why he is the Prince of Peace. Isaiah's prophecy of the coming king was a message of hope for all the people of Israel and Judea at that, and Judea, Judea, sorry, at that time of great distress. But also it's a message for us today that we can rejoice in because it is for us, for us, for you and me, a child is born. It is for us, you and me, a son is given. As you know, we're in the season of Advent at the moment, and the word Advent comes from that Latin word for coming, a time of waiting and preparation as we get ready to celebrate the birth of Jesus this Christmas. But Advent is also about a time of year that we look forward to that time when Jesus will come again in his power and glory. So in this busy time, in this business that accomplished Comes this time of running up to Christmas, I want to encourage us this morning to take time and think about how we can prepare to welcome the coming King afresh in our lives today and rejoice in the fact that we can know him as our King of Kings, personally as our Lord and Saviour, that we can know him as our wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, our everlasting Father and Prince of peace.